Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's in, that's actually it's interesting, Brigitte, that you bring that up in the film. The um, the idea of keeping attention, but then maintaining relaxation as well. That the that's the meditation idea, right? Yeah. That you maintain the tension here and then everything yeah. else is relaxed yeah i mean at least it i mean it's what i realize from for myself for the kind for what i'm looking for which is i'm always looking for the same thing really and uh, it's very classic very simple what i do and um, i all i really think it's a, like this great balance between the tension and the relaxation that makes it what i'm looking for but <laughs> so yeah it, it actually is reflected, I think, in the way that the film is made, because it's a film that feels loose, but isn't. <laughs> it's a, the, the attention is very, very careful. I also just want to say that the soundtrack that you assembled uh, is just absolutely remarkable. The, the yeah, use of ambient nice. sound. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I really need to thank my sound designer and the recordists who were there. You know. Oh. Sorry, is that a bit weird? <laughs> yeah, we got some wow on the microphones. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's the most beautiful thing, I think, is this sound. sound uh, yeah. um, and, and it's you know, it started with a conversation in Cannes this year that Lynn was in Cannes, I was in Cannes, and my sister Marianne was there, and uh, Lynn's partner was there, and we decided to get together to our family house in just above Cannes to have lunch, and... Lynn came and, and had been entrusted with a recording device mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, that Sasha uh, put on the table and we had like a three, four hour lunch on the table and yeah. on, the, on the terrace and the entire, like, I thought like what Lynn did to use this sound of the this conversation basically yeah. that was with the bird song yeah the we could, we, that is... we could never have done, you know, if Lynn had sat me down to, uh, to like ask questions and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah later and then to incorporate that in the was like very very beautiful and yeah well we you know what was brilliant was that first conversation we just took a very unobtrusive you know little bit of kit you know like that i did you know it was like very simple um and i thought oh this is the beginning it's some research but one thing that was really great was that bridget said no camera like let's not right. film yeah. so somehow it was nice because we just set up recording the sound and it was a very candid conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and I only had two days to shoot the whole thing, you know? So that conversation was ended up, it was two and a half hours material we had. Mm -hmm. So I cut the sound before I cut the picture in a way, mm -hmm. you know? Like, yeah, um, right. uh, and, and I learned a lot that definitely next time I make a documentary, I'll be cutting the sound first, you know? Because mm -hmm. it, it takes you in such different journey, you know? Like, um, that. It was so much good stuff and interesting stuff, I suppose, for me. You yeah. Know? Um, but but yeah, it was it's a completely different way of making a movie, you know. Yeah. Like, but we shot it like in two days, you know, like in a few days in the studio, and that so that that conversation was really the backbone of it. And yeah. I was so pleased that we did that first because it was because we didn't have a camera, it made it different. You know? Yeah. So you get so May was the first meeting. It's October now. I, I, I'm sorry, but this film looks like it was assembled over a much longer. Well, we should we actually shot it like a couple of months ago you know yeah, um wow. uh, it was meant to be like seven <laughs> minutes long though I'm sorry if it's a bit long but but, <laughs> but you just don't know what you're going to get with a documentary it's very strange it's like um like i say that conversation you know it, there was you know and i probably shot four hours of material in two days <laughs> because we we made a really one thing i was really conscious of is i didn't want to do fly in the wall stick the camera in Bridget's right. face because yeah. she'd just freak out she just doesn't like I mean she's quite a private person and yes. I felt so what we did is designed a whole a track that went right round yeah. the yeah, yeah I, I don't think we had that much track but we kept switching it you know yeah. <laughs> so that it would become a circle yeah. and it was great because it just was it was quite a zen way of looking at things yeah. and just traveling and um and then another thing was that she really challenged me with the characters to you know, not just to do people that were interesting, but something like she Bridget says it in the film herself, like who they have meaning to you, you know, and so that I think added something rather than just portraits, you know, like, even though there's aspects of that and there's some act, you know, there's you know um, Charlotte and Vicky's like an actress. I'm very you know Charlotte. Um, you know, there was a few people that were interesting for me that I would use in a movie. Yes. You know? so. Yeah. 
and everything that's uh, the, the people that are in the film are reverberating things that are going on in your lives and yeah. you know issues yeah. it started feeling like we were projecting i was projecting things onto the portraits that we were talking about that right. just started to become like it had a rhythm and a language that that i started l figuring out when i was shooting and i was like actually it's the projection of the voices onto the faces that is powerful you yeah. know um i think you know um and what we were talking about and you know different paths of chosen and stuff like that and you know those characters being real people and having some of those different experiences themselves as, as well it kind of like was somehow like reflection you mm -hmm. know? yeah did you show brigitte the work in progress as you were no <laughs> no. <laughs> no i was no. too worried she'd say oh my god you know <laughs> Um, no, it was such a, on such pressure, Lynn was on such pressure to get the film ready, you know. There was no real time. And um, and also, I have to say, I mean... It was uh, specifically for the Venice Film Festival. Yeah, yes, yeah right. we had to be ready. And actually, we were, like, incredi I mean, incredibly late, you know, to deliver the film. They had never had, like, a film arrive so last minute. And also, I mean, from the six minutes, it became a half hour, you know. Yeah. But... Uh, when when Lynn asked me to do the, the documentary, you know, the only way I could also, uh, I mean, I could not say no, obviously, because it was Lynn and, and we had known each other and uh, I admire Lynn a lot as a filmmaker and then also as a woman and then we became friends. So when she asked me that, I was so surprised, but at the end I had said, I said yes, but the only way I could do it was if we could share it in a way you know that it could become i will turn the camera on lean too and the other thing was that i could not uh, be involved you know i mean lean put me in a situation to do what i do you know so it was like i was shooting with the casting she had made and um, so i was doing my work which made it really easy to to actually be ignoring the camera and the, the process of the filmmaking around me but then the, the other very important thing was that I had decided also never to try to control or to interfere or to even ask. You know, I, I just, uh, it was the only way I could just like do it. But in a way, I, I'm, I'm so grateful to Lynn because um, it also, it made me turn a corner in my life in a way because I was always like, I think I say that in the film, like I just like I'm well with myself. I accepted myself and that's the way I am. But I was, it was without looking at me, you know. So, but now, <laughs> now, now I, I just, I, I have to. I, 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 Lynn made me look at myself because I mean I've seen the film only twice in Venice and now, <laughs> just now, and, and, and then I mean it's so. I mean as you know, I mean it's so hard to look at oneself, and and to uh, listen to yourself and too, to listen probably. to yourself yeah. and and all of that. But, but in a way I had accepted, and because of your generosity and your incredible like emotional sensibility i was just i i knew i was in very good hands you know and and now i'm able to look and see well yeah that's the way i look and that's the way i sound and that's okay <laughs> i mean it could be worse really seriously <laughs> i hope i hope you agree <laughs> Well, you know, that was tough for me as well, because it was, you know, in the first cuts, I was like, I don't want to hear my voice. I don't, I'm cutting myself out. But Bridget had really brought me into it. And it felt like kind of there was, it was more solidarity, so, solidarity to, you know, it was kind of like, if I'm going to do it, you're going to come with me, you know? Um, yeah. And so that was interesting. But, you know, it's it's funny, the editor was, I was driving him up the wall. He's like, but this is really interesting. I was like, no, I hate it. It's like, it's, you know, you you know, something that's really strange about seeing and hearing yourself, yeah. you know. But I think it was more and more good at finding a balance and it became more about sisters and more yes. different things came out of it, you know. So, yeah, but <laughs> it was, you know, we, we didn't have that much time to cut the amount of material we had. So I think it was really finding stuff through that conversation and what, it, you know, the excitement of things that you don't expect, you know, coming yeah. out of it, you know. Yeah, it's sisters and the emotional connection between loved ones. And the complications. Um, did you ever really think you were going to get it down to six minutes? <laughs> I had no idea. I knew yeah, it wouldn't be yeah. six, six, but then I, you know, I was like, I was quite surprised. I shot like four or five hours. Like probably you could make that like, different kind of film a feature, like, and, mm. you know, but in a different way or a continue or something. Um, 
But I was like, Jesus, why did I shoot all that? You know, yeah. you know, we, we the stuff, the amount of stuff that I, that was interesting and that I got. Um, but you just, I, I just guess, I, you just don't know where you're going to go with a documentary. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if anything, you need more cutting time. It's the stories in the cut, you yeah. know. Um, yeah, so we really, you know, we had three weeks or something. I mean, it was like making half a feature and like about. You had a three week at it. <laughs> three or four weeks, you know, do you know what I mean? like for yeah. the the whole thing, you know, two day shoot. So I was like, if I get a six day shoot, maybe I can, yeah, I can have, a, have a six week at it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, anybody have any questions in the audience? Yeah, right there. I think there's a microphone. Hold that thought. <laughs> Pass it down. Yeah. Hi, um, Hi, thanks so much for this beautiful film. Thank you. Um, I was just curious because uh, Brigitte was talking about um, a sense of control and being present and also receiving from the, uh, from the casting that you, you did. Um, and I was curious to ask you both how, um, how you feel emotionally when you're interacting with the people who are the subjects of your your photography or your films? Oh, well, I mean, it's always, you're either touched by someone or, you, if, or you're not, you know? I think Bridget said it really well. It's like, it's like this, cause there's a kind of mystery to it, you know? Sometimes someone's just alive. And one thing I, I you know, this, they have something that's deeper, you know? Um, sometimes you're quite, people are quite different in still as to being on film. They're, they're better animated. Um, but one thing, it was funny because all the characters I gravitated towards that I would just shoot in a movie or, you know, I started going, some of my family are in it and, you know, like, or people that, I, you know, I just felt very interested in it. You know, Bridget's quite decisive when she doesn't, when she feels nothing from a photograph, she just says, okay, bye-bye, you know, very quickly, <laughs> you know. Um, and it's, it's a beautiful way, of, I, I really noticed this way of, of in a very respectful way, she knew what she wanted, you know, like, and she commands this real, you, you know, you can see the way the crew are like, you know, here's the apple box, here's the, do you know, it's like a kind of, you know, like a dance in a way. Um, But yeah, like to me, it was, you kind of feel it right away if you, you know, if someone's got something behind the eyes or, you know, or there's something else going on and, and that was, they were the people we cut in really to the movie, you know, Um, I think we like Jack's my nephew and his girlfriend had split up, you know, um, and we were talking about relationships, but you can really tell they've got a history and I think just that one shot and I think the projection of the words is one of the most moving parts for me, I think. Yeah, that's really almost the emotional center of the film. It's very mysterious. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I mean, for me, for me um, all, I mean, you're right. I mean, sometimes you feel some, some real connection, some, sometimes you don't, but I'm always able to be 100% present and really, really focus on the person that is with me, that I photograph. And sometimes it's very brief. Sometimes I never see the person again. Sometimes that's the start of a relationship, a friendship, you know, over the years, I mean, and I think it's very instinctive in a way. I mean, I don't really know how to explain. It's like, re it's like the same as when you meet someone and you sit around the table, you know, for the first time, and you look at each other, and it's like that same kind of, it's intimidating, it's uh, it's kind of thrilling, it's uh, mysterious, and then at the end, I I I, 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 I take a picture, <laughs> but you know, that's that's about that moment of intimacy between two people, and it's it's more or less, depending of the person, it's like more or less important, and uh, that's it. Uh, in the credits, there's a storyboard artist listed. Is that a usual part of your process? And how did you balance that with the spontaneous moments on set? Um, well, actually, it was, you know, he's a friend, you know, uh, called Adrian Mahler. Um, and he, he, I think he works with John Glazier. And different, he just offered, like, he said, do you want to do something? But made it more or less, 
And I thought, well, how can I storyboard a documentary? So it really wasn't that. It was more the setups I would use because I knew that I, so I was, I, it made me really think about where the camera would be, you know, like and try and plan it a bit as much as you can plan it, you know. But there was loads of things we did that we didn't, <laughs> we didn't do in the end. But that definitely that, the way I was going to film it is I thought about it quite technically first, you know, like where we were going to put the camera and how we were going to do this track, you know, with the DP, you know, like how to make it very fluid, you know. Um, so it helped in that respect, but you can't really storyboard a, a documentary. So he just let in a, in a way we just sat and worked the set it, it ups together. But but when I'm making a fiction film, it can be useful, you know. Um, and it was useful to a degree to do that here, you know, to try and think about it, to try and think about how I was going to look at Bridget, you know, before starting out or see it, you know. So in that, in that respect, it was useful, you know, because the whole time we were always hiding behind cameras. Like, I'm always behind, a, you know, like, so it was, it, it was interesting. I felt like we, somehow, how with that, the can interview and stuff, I thought, I was like, we're kind of always hiding. And so I think there's a little bit of that tentativeness at the beginning. So as much as you could get ideas about, how to do it more in a, a way, not just for technicality, but more t out of how to do this in a way where it's it's going to be something of ease for Bridget. Like she just forgets we're there, you know? Um, and that was together with the DP as well, who was amazing, so, yeah. But it, with your with your uh, your films in general, you, you do some storyboarding? And I mean, the question could apply to all of your filmmaking, really. You, well, I think short listing is probably the best yeah. thing often, yeah. you know, because I think you can get quite carried away. I mean, yeah. Adrian's a brilliant storyboard artist in the sense that they're quite loose. It's like, you know, they're not like beautiful drawings, like, but he really understands camera work, yeah. you know, camera. So that he can be exciting to work with and he's got interesting ideas if you're doing a fiction. And, um, but it gives and you a visualization so, yeah, sometimes when you need it. But for coming a short list. from that background, I, you know, sometimes a short list is often, I mean, the last film I, was, I did was um, You Were Never Really Here with Joaquin Phoenix was. We, you know, I had to cut 20 pages out of the script while I was sh in prep, you know, but just because we had 27 days to shoot. So that was crazy because me and the DP were sitting at five o'clock in the morning doing storyboards, doing, saying, how can we get this whole scene in one shot or two shots, you know, because we, we don't have time, you know, but it was like an exercise in economy that was super interesting, but also, you know, kind of drove us crazy as well, but it made you like almost so, uh, so sure of what you needed, you know, um, that that can be a really interesting exercise. But I, I think I think shortlisting is the best, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. W one sec, Alistair. <laughs> uh, hi. Uh, could you talk about the assemblage of the non-portrait stills a little bit? Well. It, first, we just started with the conversation in the garden, and that was just stills that really. I gave Bridget a little kind of. I said, "Can you just take some pictures of your house?" You know, there was something about this house, and there was the sound of the birds, and it was we were very much in that place. So I took some pictures of her, and she took some pictures of me, and you know, and I very much hiding behind the camera way, like I was saying. So that it started like that, and then there was a box and when she it was like a kind of interesting like a mystery she sent a bunch of pictures just snaps of her home really and things that space you know because we, we I never filmed it um and then I saw postcards and you know and so I got I phoned up Marianne Bridget's sister and I said can I get that what's inside the box you know <laughs> it's a bit like <laughs> that lynch line you know what I mean what's inside the box and, and and so there was a whole big thing about finding out what was inside the box and then there was nothing much inside the box in the end, you know. But it made us think about the postcards and what they wrote to each other and when they spoke to each other. And so more and more, it really was a collaboration because Marianne was sending a lot of the correspondence or pictures, you know, this exciting time when they first, you know, they're like, you know, Marianne's quite a lot younger, but a bit younger, but she obviously, she wanted to follow Bridget and travel with her. And, and it was just like this kind of beautiful kind of correspondence and, a picture of them but it, it was like piecemeal it was like it wasn't just that we had all that stuff at the beginning it was kind of the editor and I on investigation to find out stuff you know like um I mean there's a whole story between uh, behind the Louise Bourgeois you know letter which I'd 
is another little piece, you know. <laughs> but I just need more time for that, you know. Um, but it was super interesting in terms of it's much more like an investigation rather than, you know, um, straightforward where you know, you know, fictional pieces. I, I find that really interesting. Yeah, it's beautiful. The whole thing with the waiting for the sound of the fax machine in the middle of the night. Yeah. Yeah, and and then the most uh, moving thing for me is like the lean that keeps ringing her sister and the sister does not pick up it's every time like very very moving <laughs> yeah i've got a bit of a you know th this has been a very strange year for the last few years my sister and i had a bit of exchange even though we were super close so it was strange that it became more about my sister but i wanted to be respectful to her as well because you know it was me talking about how i felt rather than just to talk about her you know um but i think you know that closeness will come back it's just been a strange time for her you know um and so it was funny how that this the film became about it was bridget then but then it never really became about all the amazing still she's talking she she takes it became more about her life or her, her, how she chosen and and how i feel like that a lot as well and that you choose this thing it's more than just the job it's like you, you get pretty obsessive you know that as a filmmaker too you know and so it just swallows up your whole life and you need to really understand in partners or sometimes you don't you know and um and so it became about that and about family and sister and meaning you know your work and it opened up this whole kind of box you know of stuff but, um in a very surprising way you know and one of the things I, I realized only after I saw the film, but not even looking at it the first time in Venice, I mean, I realized the day after that actually Lynn never talked, it's never said or presented or shown in the film that usually when people talk to me or talk about my work, it's all about the personality that I photograph, like the very well-known people that I photograph a lot of them, that's true. but. And I realized that what an extraordinary thing to have done this entire portrait <laughs> without mentioning it once, without showing it once. It, it really became really about the pure, uh, what the essence of the work is, about, about the work and about the work and life yeah. and intertwined, but not about anything else than yeah. the actual process and what. Yeah, it's a, about the yeah, actual work yeah, and the presence and of it in your life. That is pretty incredible today, you know. Yeah, I agree. I thought I was and then it comes to that great moment when you say, once I arrive at that decision that I'm going to stop, yeah. I'll be happy to never take another photograph, yeah. but I haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, no, <laughs> soon I hope. Soon uh -huh. I hope. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it, it, you know, like you can feel like that as a filmmaker too, so I kind of yeah. like completely, you know, you know, have, have having started you know i studied photography first and just been a bit of, you know i'm really interested in photography and find it inspiring as a filmmaker yeah like often like um details and things you don't expect and you know portraits that are different you know like they find a different thing to tell you something um you know so th there was something uh, you, you and recognize the obsession as well you know mm -hmm. like and mm -hmm. um and it made me really aware of that lovely thing with Stills, it's just you and the camera as well, yeah. you know, like there's not too much here. Uh, you know, when I first made a film, I was moving away from the crew. I was like, hey, there's too many people. I just couldn't, I couldn't deal with this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'd only done Stills. It can be before. intimidating, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Some time for a couple more. Oh, there's uh, someone in the back? Okay. Yeah. And then... all the way in the back. <laughs> Thanks so much for the great film. I had the honor of being photographed by Brigitte a couple of weeks ago in Aspen, so I recommend it to all of you. It's a wonderful, <laughs> uh, timeless keepsake. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, Brigitte, you photographed a lot of um, uh, actors and actresses and a lot of politicians. I'm wondering who is more comfortable in their skin between the actors and actresses versus the politicians. And I'm also curious, if there are any historic figures that if you could go back in a time machine, you'd love to photograph? <laughs> um, no, just, I mean, as a time machine, I'm not sure because I never, every time I'm asked that, I never know what to say. <laughs> Somehow I, I, I draw a blank. But um, <laughs> no, I mean, everybody is different and, and that's true that maybe there is similarity in 
like among, among actors or performers or politicians or um, versus um, artists, let's say, or, or regular people that I photograph. But um, I think it's really case by case. I mean, some. I mean, is, what's different is the circumstance a lot. I mean, when you photograph politicians, you usually, usually have very little time. It's incredibly controlled from their camp, you know. So um, it's it's less. It's, it's and and they come really prepared with one look, you know. But um, it depends. Also, I was able to have a, a real portrait of, let's say, Barack Obama or early on or oh, um, by having more time and and actors sometimes you know i love actors and I, I love performers and sometimes they are more comfortable but actually often like the very very great one are not and they are they, they cannot um really see them i mean they feel i think uh, a little embarrassed a little like they are performing a little ashamed to be like they're like looked at if they are not in a character. So sometimes it's uh, and I find that uh, with a few of the great great actors I know. Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro, yeah. Meryl Streep, yeah. Joaquin, yeah. Uh, Daniel De Lewis, yeah. uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. I mean yeah. I can think about quite a few that yeah. that are yeah. in that group, but. Um, I think every 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 time a portrait every time I do a portrait I feel it's different you know I'm like in a frame of mind to like receive that person and not that category mm. so and also we could have used the, we, we had so many amazing pictures if we wanted to go that way to to use the pictures of the people that were recognizable or famous or you know just amazing at what they do and you know so many gorgeous pictures we had but mm. I felt it would take away from Bridget in a way like yeah. I was more interested in the process rather than this is what the end result is because I feel mm -hmm. that hopefully people come and they look at her work or know her work you know yeah. um so to me it was it, it was more about stripping it back you yeah. know rather than uh, that was maybe the more the obvious of it. Yeah. yeah that, that yeah. was maybe the more obvious way to go but quite early on in the process I eliminated that you yeah. know yeah we'll do one yeah Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous movie. Thank you so much. Um, you mentioned that you um, started working with the audio first and you cut the story using the words and the, and the way the story flowed. What I noticed in the film is you take us on a walk and you stop and you make us stop. And we look at a still because this subject, the visual subject is a still photograph. So my question is, when you're, when you're working with the audio, when you're cutting that audio, are you thinking in advance where that slowdown, where that pause is going to, to come? Or is that something that organically appears as you structure the story, you, you assemble the, the video, the stills, et cetera? How, how, how did that process come along? Um, it's a bit of both, really. I mean, because I I recorded the sound first, it was I was aware of some of the things that came into some of the things that we talked about that were interesting that were not necessarily about being a filmmaker or a photographer, but more just about our lives or sort of the weights the paths we've taken. And so, I mean, I was really sure the camera. I wanted the camera to flow like the conversation had like and, and really so that to be very fluid but very unobtrusive but then other things um and i started getting the ideas that maybe our words would be projected on the sitter you know in a way and was thinking about who I, you know that made you know who I, I chose or you know but a lot of it was discovery as well to be honest like you know there was a lot i mean i think a documentary really comes together in the edit so um and also I had a really brilliant sound recorders on set, you know, like they were, you know, and I wanted to show the artifice. So it was great. We could just get the boom where we wanted it. We had the, the sound of the space, you know, we had the sound of the space that was bad recordings that we'd done, in, <laughs> you know, without any crew in Cannes, you know, like our, you know, a, a village outside and where, where Bridget and Marianne have a, have a, have a beautiful 
very peaceful place they they that that's part of their families. Um, you know, um, it's I think it's your mum's house, or you know, and it's like um, but but there was a real intimacy there, and to put that intimacy against this kind of industrial kind of strange space, it had a you know it it was it was interesting for me to get really great sound recording in the day, but also to base everything around that conversation, and that gave me ideas. But it never I wouldn't say everything was. I think the exciting thing is that some things just happen, you know, like um, some, you know, like I wasn't expecting my nephew and his ex-girlfriend to have that, the something, the feeling they had, you know, but I was like, I knew it was really good when we shot it. I was like, there's something super interesting because mm. it's a backdrop to what I'm saying or what um, Bridget was talking about in her life. And there was some kind of emotional power that you could just really feel, it was very palpable. So yeah, a bit of both, a bit, of, but definitely you want to give yourself a bit of editing time. You need more editing time, I think. You know, that's why <laughs> I always do. But you know, that's one thing I've really learned is that you know, where documentary, it's the edit. You know, yeah. that the, that's the most important. Um, but yeah, we prepped a lot. You know, it's hard to get out of the cutting room, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. totally. Then, yeah, as you know. Yeah. Uh, we'll do one more. Yeah. Bridget, do you ever work, well, um, well maybe let me say first, uh, when you look at the photographs, it really, uh, there's a sense of vulnerability that comes through with the, with your subjects and it's almost like you've helped them t for the facade and the wall to come down. I assume that it happens often that you have people that struggle to bring the down and I'd like to know what, uh, what do you do in those instances? What strategies do you employ? And maybe that question would apply to to you as well. Um, then, if you don't mind sharing, if if there's ever yeah, yeah, practice. Yeah. Um, no, I mean uh, there is uh, only by being hundred percent there and present and really like putting. I mean, first of all, I I I, I control the situation very much when I do portraits before. You know the space that I choose, the uh, light, the music or no music, the the sense of intimacy. Like a very very, uh, I put people in a special situation that is already very intimate and 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 uh, and safe. And uh, and then I keep it with n nobody in the room except me and my like closest team that stand apart. So it says a very uh, uh, intimate setting but if people are uh, don't want to 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 let you see them then they won't you know there is nothing to be done and i'm and the only thing is like i i'm quite persistent maybe and i just like will keep shooting until i feel i i, I really have a moment that i can recognize as a true moment and uh, it's a kind of a mystery you know the, how i i'm able to do that time after time and you know, I don't know how it happened, but it's just a, it's 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 just like your your presence that um, works or do not work with the person that you have in front of you, and that's why I was saying it's not so much about the photography at the end. It's like two people being, you know, compatible in a way or not, you know, but ready to trust. So that that's it. I, I mean, I don't have a secret. <laughs> Well, that's kind of the secret, I guess. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, to me, it was there was something I really recognised, and you know, we use a different medium, but the time when I love it the best when I'm making movies is when I'm very in the moment, like, and also looking and what's not just being, oh, this is my perfect script or this was a shot I wanted. It's like what's happening now that's maybe better than that or interesting or, you know, I've. You know, in the same with actors, it's like it's a huge trust thing, you know, and I've worked with non-professional actors and actors and the vulnerability there, there I mean, I've been in, I've had a few scene moments with actors where, you know, it's it, it's it it's been really tough moments and, you know, often what I, th I find when I look at the, you know, when they make the behind the scenes stuff is that I look like some maniac at the monitor who's mimicking exactly what the actors are doing. It's like I'm walking through it with them, you know? So I think you need to, it's great having that gun to your head sometimes, like it's horrible, but like, you know, you have to make the right decision and I think it's finding a truth. And I think, you know, that and hopefully we, I think 
the people I've chosen to work with have been like people that I think can sort of dig into that space, you know, um, become quite vulnerable. But I think listen, there is the similarity in that moment, you know. Um, but I think Bridget's, you know, the queen of zen. And she, for me, it was like, she's the first person that took my photograph where I thought, I mean, I actually felt quite emotional, you know, and I, I think I, I got quite tearful and it was strange that like, things came through my head and I felt that instead of feeling vulnerable, I actually felt kind of, even though that was there, that it kind of washed over me. And I think that's a real skill to get to, to, to you know, because if you've that, being a photographer, you can tell when someone's taking a terrible picture of you. You're like, the lighting's crap, they're sticking the camera under my, you know, up my nose. And, you know, it's like, you kind of know when like, and it makes you uncomfortable, especially if you're used to be, being behind the camera. So I think it's been in the moment. That's the same for filmmaking, yeah. But also you can tell when someone doesn't have what Brigitte is talking about, which is that full attention. And with, yeah. with in different photography, they've just sort of like compromised on, you know, something that's an acceptable image yeah, right yeah. and it's also empathy i mean you have to i i mean i think w yeah. what you are saying about also like what you feel you feel for the actor i mean i i that's why also i love actors performer i feel like great empathy towards them because they do something so dangerous to me i mean you know they they, they expose themselves in a way that to ridicule to excess to to pain, to to be like, I, I find it. Uh, and so when you photograph also just also normal people, you f you feel for them because you know it's not an easy place to be, to be on the other side of the camera. You understand it mm -hmm. and you, f you feel for them. And I feel, I think that maybe in Lynn's case, when she directs actor or me, when I'm with people that I photograph, I think people understand that we are there with great uh, intention and, and care, you know, so, uh, and I feel people also understand when uh, the focus is on them in a very intense way, but in a good way, mm. you know, not trying to catch something they don't want to give you, you know. Yeah, I think, you know, you'll know this as well. It's like, I think when an actor, they can really, you know, smell it if you're not with them, if you're not there, you know, like, uh, I think there's a much better relationship in the film. There's a magic that goes in the film as well once that trust is has been established and you know um they feel you're digging deep so they do you know so. um that's all the time we have i just want to say thank you to Mew Mew for making this screening possible and for making this beautiful film possible but most of all thank you to both of you to lynn and brigitte thanks very much <laughs> thanks for coming <laughs> i want to say one more thing thanks to I, Kane I, I, as I well. wanted to to say one more thing to thank all my friends that came and all the other people too. <laughs> but, and then to especially thank Janet. Well, thanks yeah, to Janet. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> Janet, Janet has been my collaborator for 25 years now. And she won't stand up. She's very <laughs> embarrassed. <but. laughs> so thank you, Janet. So. Thank you, Janet, as well. I, I need a Janet in my life, I keep saying. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.